<laughs> Welcome back, troglodytes, to your daily dose of guitar information, the Trogly's Guitar Show. This year, I've brought you some very spooky guitars, but to end out our monthly celebration here, inside this coffin of a case, we have the most expensive, scary guitar that we've seen yet. That's right, I went all out for you guys and I bought the Dragon Les Paul. Infused with the essence of a real dragon, this is one of the most fancy Les Pauls to come out of the custom shop in the modern era. This is a 2022 creation that used a little bit of inspiration from other models that Gibson has done in the past to create a super magnificent beast. We talked about it in a wiring episode once before. Now we have it in the flesh. All right, so first impressions on this thing. It is a crazy quilt top Les Paul custom. It's got the matching back on it. It's got a super flamed neck. It's got the dragons on the headstock. It's got it on the fretboard. It is quite the magnificent beast. And these inlays, oh my goodness, photos do not do this thing justice. They dance in the light, they're shimmering. In fact, I would say the inlay work is even more impressive than the quilted figuring of the top. It's definitely nothing to sneeze at. However, my initial fears of this not being a very active top because usually when you get super heavy quilts they don't move too much was kind of true and kind of false at the same time it really just depends on the lighting situation like right now I've got some artificial light and I will say it's looking pretty good here but if you can get this thing out in the Sun that's when it really dances so kind of yes kind of no but this thing is actually incredibly lightweight I'm almost questioning did they chamber this thing that's how light it is but first impressions aside let's go ahead and learn about the history of this beast in 1996, there was a guitar called the Snake Pit. It was one of the first official runs of Slash signature guitars. Now there's technically one before that that was just built for him, but as far as something that there were more than one made of that had Slash's name attached to it, that was this bad boy right here, the Snake Pit. It had a really cool fancy cobra inlay here done up in mother of pearl and abalone, and it had a relief carving of the snake on the Snake Pit album. Naturally, I think we can all agree that there was a little bit of inspiration maybe taken from this to put a a big old dragon on here, whereas our friendly snake is technically going the other way. But isn't that a rare sight to see a snake pit and a dragon next to each other? Well, if you've been watching my channel, you know the story behind that one. But the main thing to know is who did the relief carving and many of the inlays on this particular run of guitars. It was Bruce Kunkel. Bruce Kunkel's name is important because he is the one that designed the dragon. We first saw this design about three years ago on what has later been dubbed the Dragon 400. It was one of Bruce Kunkel's final creations for Gibson, in which he had designed a very ornate Super 400 with the giant headstock, it had the old Gibson logo, it had a fancy dragon inlaid on the headstock, we have a mother of pearl dragon truss rod cover, the dragon fretboard inlays, and he just went all out with a relief carving not only on the top, with a matching dragon dragon crest, but also on the back, along with dragon scales on the neck. That was an expensive beast at $150,000. And then we could also talk about things like Les Paul Ultimas, other Crimson Division guitars that have super fancy inlays like the Harp Lady in the Flames. Our next inspiration actually is from a completely different manufacturer, PRS. They have been well known for doing dragon design guitars that are ultra high end and fancy. Some of them look really cool and crazy, other ones they're a little bit more tame, but within PRS culture if you own a dragon, you're hot spooky stuff. Even better if you've got the double neck. So can you call Gibson a copycat? I'll leave that up to you guys. I'm just glad there's more dragon guitars out there, they're kinda cool. But now we need to know the rest of the story on this one. It surfaced on Reverb a few months back by the Acoustic Room. Landon is well known for selling very, very, very high-end art guitars that Gibson, Fender, Martin, Gretsch, you know, any manufacturer who will create an art guitar, that is what he specializes in. So he worked with Gibson to create a Dragon Les Paul because he's the one that sold the Dragon 400, so naturally he should be the one to sell this particular one. It was about three years in the making, but it finally got delivered and it was 
was listed on Reverb for $35,000 and it sold nearly instantaneously. Surprisingly, to another dealer who posted it up for $50,000. So I kind of warmed up to this thing as like, ah oh, man, it's just gonna keep getting crazier, isn't it? So I went ahead and locked it down and bought it because this is the only Dragon Les Paul in existence. And even though this dragon doesn't look anything like my dragon, it kind of matches the channel. But during its time that it spent with the other dealer, he did a little bit more research into this. Because if Bruce was affiliated with the initial dragon, what's the story on this one? Because we know Bruce Kunkel designed this whole inlay work. However, Bruce said he was not the creator of this one. In fact, he was quite upset that Gibson used his designs again. So we have a little bit of a story of betrayal with this one. He potentially feels that they stole this work from him, but Gibson's probably like, hey, we are paying you to design that guitar. We own the design. So this might have been created using leftover parts of his and or they just replicated that guitar but kind of toned it down we've only got it on the fretboard we've got it on the headstock we don't have any like relief carving of a dragon on the top although i think it would have been really cool had they had snake pit this thing out and did like some sort of a fancy dragon here and then as far as the back yes we do get the quilted maple back veneer but they left our sides just alone. They're just straight up mahogany. So not like a super custom or the Les Paul, but then they gave it a five piece maple neck here with two of the pieces being walnut. So this is certainly a fancy guitar with kind of a questionable history. Will they make more of them? At the time of recording, this is the only planned dragon. I know of a few other people who tried to get Gibson to build more of these, but the answer has always been a flat no. They don't want to build any more of these. So this may go down in history books as a true one-off, but to learn more about this beauty, let's go ahead, throw it on the workbench, and take a look at its parts and specs like you've never seen before. But before we continue on today, let's have a word from our sponsor, Sweetwater. You can buy all kinds of new gear with these guys. And the best part being, you can actually choose your individual instrument out. So if you're looking for a Les Paul standard, you can choose your top, you can choose your color, you can choose your weight. So if you already know what you're going to get, there's no way to be disappointed. But hey, say things don't work out, Sweetwater's real good about the returns too. And they also have some pretty cool giveaways that they're currently doing, so you can check that link in the description. Thank you, Sweetwater, for sponsoring tonight's episode. Inside the Dragon Les Paul. It's a real treat to be able to tear this thing apart to see what kind of specs did they actually give this. Like, we know the outside specs, but what are the inner workings? Nobody tears apart art guitars ever, especially ones from the Crimson Division, which we'll talk about a little bit later on. All right, the moment of truth for our neck pickup, it's actually very basic. It's a Gibson 490R. And for the bridge, the natural one to pair with it, the 498T. So honestly, that's a huge letdown. This literally is just a regular Les Paul custom that they sell for 5,000 bucks, that they put some really fancy inlays on the fretboard, really changed up our headstock, and obviously gave it the maple back. So I mean, they really transformed it, but as far as like the pickups and specs, maybe they're like, hey, nobody's gonna play this anyways. Why put fancy boutique pickups in here or custom buckers or anything? But the pickup cavities themselves are quite interesting. You can see it's got the long neck tendon right here, and then this is the extension of the neck into the body here. So two stripes of walnut and maple in between. A little bit easier to see here without the red finish. But here you can see the maple top onto the mahogany body, and you can see some of the additional staining right here. Not all the cavity has the stain though. And as far as the bridge pickup, it's just pretty basic here. But you can see the seam line of the two-piece maple top. And that bridge is reading 13.95k ohms, neck position at 7.8ish, and the middle just for fun, 5. But next up, we have our bridge to talk about. This is just a regular Nashville style bridge. But I do want to comment, they have a pretty decent dish carve on this one. So I think they took a little bit more time to accentuate that as well as staining the top, especially with the belly right here. But then by the time you get here, it's just like completely flattened out. It's kind of strange. But the tailpiece is also done up in gold and it is full weight. Then you can see your toggle switch. It's in your regular location. Could they have went crazy and did a mother of pearl one? Yeah, they could have, but it probably would have cracked. <laughs> Under the pressure, the black looks good because, you know, it matches the rest of the plastics and it matches this really dark double dyed finish. So again, it really just depends what angle you're viewing this but you can kind of see the effect here. It's not necessarily that the quilt moves, it's the color in between. Watch how this area goes from a lighter color all the way down to a really deep shade of like black. That is the effect that makes this very polarizing in person. It's pretty cool. But I'm still gonna stand by my fact that 
a, a super nice wide flame top probably would have did this better. However, the nice thing about quilt that is like this is it's better for displaying because it doesn't matter what angle you view this at, you're going to see all the crazy quiltedness. So that is exactly why they chose this kind of a top. And in fact, this thing is not actually called the Dragon Les Paul. It's just officially called Les Paul Custom 5AQ, standing for 5A Quilt Top. But it did not get a pick guard stock from the factory. However, it is in the case if you wanted to install it. So I guess you can get a vague interpretation of what that would look like. And then we have our golden reflector knobs. They just have a little bit of a yellow tinge to the top. And it's just regular controls, two volumes, two tones. I don't think they did any push-pull pots. Nope, all regular stuff here. So overall, I would say they did a fantastic job on the front. I mean, if we're getting really nitpicky, there is a little bit of splintering to the wood that they could have cleaned up just a little bit more. I mean, after all, this is a crimson level guitar, but that's really getting nitpicky on them. But now let's move on to the fretboard. This is an absolute masterpiece. Like I thought it was like, yeah, okay in the picture, but in person, the way it shimmers and shines in the light, it is fantastic to see. It's just not really possible for me to show that off on camera. I tried my best with the outdoor B-roll shots that you're seeing some of right now, but you've got a little bit of golden mother of pearl, regular mother of pearl with like your whiskers and like the bottom of his mouth, but then you get the abalone going up and down pretty much the entirety of it. Do you see what they did here? They cut out individual scales of the abalone and they made sure it actually had some lineage to make it look like a real scale. So it's beautiful. I mean, the underside, this is something you have to appreciate in person for sure. But as far as specs, you got 22 medium jumbo style frets, 12 inch fretboard radius, 24 and three quarter inch scale length, with honestly kind of a skinny nut width at 1.66 inches. Then by the 12th, it's 2.07. With a first fret neck depth of 0.86, that increases to one by the 12th. So just a standard C-shaped medium profile. Here that is at the first and 12th fret. But this right here was my favorite. Hey, I didn't realize that was a spec on this guitar find. It actually has the abalone side marker inlays on top of all that. So that gives you super ultra fancy vibes even when you're playing this. And that's the same all up and down. You can also see how cool the flame neck looks while you're playing it. Now you could say, Hey, couldn't they have scraped that binding a little bit better? Couldn't they have scraped the nut? Yes, but that's just how Gibson does it for the nut, and a little bit of bleed into the binding is pretty common. However, I think that's just more so they could have spent a little bit more time scraping it. Because this area doesn't really have too much of that. It disappears, kind of dips, and then comes back. And then I'm happy to report very, 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 very minimal, if any, tooling marks on the fretboard. It's either that or these gorgeous inlays are just like, hey, look at me instead of being able to see anything else. But I think you can definitely see the effect. Yes, that's what I was trying to show you guys, just how cool this thing looks in person. These are very active inlays that they put on here. Not all abalone and mother of pearl is created the same. This is some premium choice stuff. But now the awesome headstock here. Let's start with our truss rod. Everything's looking good here, but you kind of have a weird white haze to everything. I wonder what that's about. But this is so awesome. I was curious, was this just like a plated mother of pearl? Like it's just the topper and the rest of this is actually just going to be plastic, but no. It is a good solid chunk of mother of pearl right here. That is fantastic. I love it. Obviously, it's got to be thick or else it would crack under the tension. So that's probably why it's as thick as it is. But you've got another little dragon guy here. As far as your headstock goes, you've got the Gibson logo. Although an abalone one would have been kind of cool, they decided to do mother of pearl with that and do the flames on the side as abalone. Then of course the mixture to create our dragon here. It's like, wow, Bruce Kunkel, man, designing this dragon. I mean, he really went all out. That's like the snake on steroids as far as all that intricate inlay work goes. But if you're wondering why we have flames up here, it's because it's a two-piece headstock veneer. So it's just flame maple. They put it on the headstock. Trust me, getting Gibson to do that on modern day guitars is a little bit difficult. And then I'm not sure if this is intentional, but around each inlay, it's like they didn't do that dark staining. So it kind of gives it a little bit of a majesty effect. At first I was thinking, ah, that's just lazy stain work. But now I'm starting to think, okay, maybe they did that for a reason. But of course you get the Grover Imperial tips that are also made of a 
It feels more like a pearloid material after handling the truss rod cover. That still gives the cool vibe. As far as craftsmanship goes, the only thing I noticed was a small little lacquer ding. And it's right there. And since this is technically passed through two hands before it got to me, it's possible it wasn't that way from the factory, but that really just looks like a dip in the lacquer or something to me. Before we take a look at the back, let's talk about the Crimson Division. So I'll pause the video here so you can read all this while I tell you about it. But the Crimson Division is the highest end of the custom shop. It's where the art pieces and really high-end jazz arch top guitars are created at. They're typically one-off slash custom orders or just really crazy like dealer guitars. Like I'm pretty sure the Bats in Flight is another similar model to this one. Just not quite as extreme that had the Crimson booklet. But as they go through the factory, they have special tagging as Crimson Division and then they get some special attention to detail at the end, and then they always get this special Crimson booklet. This is actually a very monumental episode. It's my first Crimson Division guitar. I wouldn't say I did too half bad on the first one to document. And now we take a look at the back. In many ways, I would actually say the back looks better than the front. You get a lot of the chatoint effect on here. And it's like almost book matched, but not necessarily. But this is a true Les Paul custom. They have all the layers of binding on the back. I think it would have been cool if they would have did like Les Paul Supreme style and just have three ply back here. But this flame maple back is not like a Supreme. Supremes, check out this episode here. They have a carved back, whereas this is a flat back, but it's not just a thin veneer. You can actually see how thick it is right here. You can see the area where they stained it with the black stain, but here's where the maple back ends. I'd say it's about three tenths of an inch deep. It is a huge shame that they couldn't just make the whole body out of maple, kind of like what they did for the 2008 Super Custom that we talked about in this episode, because that's how they did it in the modern era to get something to look like a Super Custom or the Les Paul that has the flamed edges. But hey, any Les Paul that gets additional figuring back here is cool by me. Then you get to see the quilting from the backside, which is kind of a rare treat, but it has the markings RB, and over here it looks like uh, CK, something like that. But you just have your regular Gibson pots with your regular capacitors. There's nothing too fancy as far as the electronics go. But that was a nice sight to see here. Now I would show you the toggle switch cavity, but I can't get the medallion off. Those things are always tricky. But a pretty cool back here. And yes, in case you missed it, it does have the thin binding in the cutaway, so you can see the maple top exposed a little bit. And it's just your regular strap buttons in your usual locations. Now, unfortunately, the neck is just so dark, you can't even see the walnut stripes too well, but I really love the choice of woods on this neck. The centerpiece is ultra flamed, so that's all looking good. It dances in the light, right? However, the edge pieces are a little bit wider, and underneath it, you have a very interesting ringy wood grain to it. You can kind of see what I'm talking about right here. It really reminds me, again, of dragon scales. Even on the side that you play, you can see it there. So you get a little bit of wood grain and figuring. It's the best of both worlds on this neck. That's that one feature that makes this one particularly cool. So even if another one does get made, A, this is always the first one, and B, it's got the really cool neck. Then we've got our Gibson Custom decal back here. You can see the back side of the Grover tuners. They're just regular ones, not locking. And our serial number dating this one to 2022. But all said and done, this one weighs just a hair over nine pounds. Nine pounds, one ounces. Let's go ahead, plug it in, and hear how this beast sounds. So the tones out of this, it's very open and airy is the best way to describe it. I really love the middle position on this one. And the neck is nice and deep as well.
test i always use that death clock riff right there to see if the neck pickup gets muddy if you can play this chord and still hear all the notes clearly that's how you know it's a good neck pickup So now that we know all about the Dragon Les Paul, what are my final thoughts on this thing? Is it worth paying for? I don't know, I'm, I'm still kind of on the fence myself. The fact that Gibson is currently saying that they're not going to make any more of these kind of makes this a future collectible because it's so cool. It's a brother to that archtop model and it's a really sweet Les Paul. It's an art guitar, but yet not necessarily over the top at the same time. That's what's cool about this. I don't think this crosses over into gaudy territory, but your thoughts and opinions might differ. It's got a pretty awesome quilt top. It's got a very deep red finish. I mean, it's got the quilting on the back. I mean, you watch the video, you understand just how cool this thing is. So ultimately, you know, it's kind of like a collector's bragging rights thing. So if you're interested in being the next owner of this one, I guess I would hear out an offer, but I don't, I don't know. I'm, I'm on the fence about this one. I'm sure people would like to see this at the Future Museum. But I will tell you, playing this thing, it feels great. Like the inlays, it takes a couple of seconds to get used to the fact that, yeah, you definitely need to be looking at your abalone markers on the side to know where you are on the neck. But it's really the neck itself that's so comfortable on this guitar. It's a little bit more rounded than usual. It's got just a little bit more heft to it, but without being like full on 50s neck profile. So I found that very very comfortable. It's a very lightweight guitar. The body weighs almost nothing. It's almost a little bit neck heavy to be honest, but it is a beautiful piece of Gibson history and it is the Halloween special for the year 2022. Yeah, maybe not as crazy as other years in the past, but hey, <laughs> we can't all be hideous monster chopped off SGs, Franken Stratocaster weird stuff, but check out those episodes if you need a little bit more halloween -y in your life today. But otherwise, I hope you had a safe and joyous holiday occasion. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and we will catch you tomorrow on the next one. Take care.